Oceans cover around 70% of our planet's surface, and in these oceans you'll find a vast array of creatures. Unfortunately, most of us don't get to see these creatures up close, and most of us only get to see them on our dinner plates, or on the end of a hook. Not only are the oceans home to the world's largest creature, but it's also home to many other creatures that we still are yet to see. Some experts suggest that we have only explored around 5% of our oceans, and the depths of our oceans are still a mystery. This means that there could be creatures down there that we are still yet to see, and this planet could still throw up a few surprises. Because the majority of humans spend most of their time on land, a lot of us miss out on some of the incredible sights of the oceans. Mass gatherings can be rare and spectacular occasions, but very few of us get to see them. On the other hand, there are events that seem otherworldly, and at first they can be hard to comprehend. In this video I'll be going through just a few of these occasions, as I'll be going through 5 marine events that have to be seen to be believed. And for our first event we will be heading over to the Eastern Pacific Ocean, as we will be taking a closer look at the Pelagic Red Crab. Now this small little crustacean is only crab by name, as it's actually a species of squat lobster. It has a tail that helps propel itself through the water, and this comes in very handy when swimming through the ocean column. These are relatively small creatures, reaching a maximum size of around 15 centimeters, and they are one of the more lovable crustaceans. This is mainly due down to their feisty behavior, and also their very cute smile. Because of the way their mouth is formed, it almost looks like they have a constant smile, and because of this, even when they are attacking you, it is hard to hate them. Because these squat lobsters are relatively small, they are targeted by many predators, and a few different species of tuna are known to target them. This is why in some areas they're known as tuna crabs, but this of course is both misleading and quite disrespectful, because I'm sure you wouldn't want to be named after something that eats you. One of the things that makes this crustacean unique is the fact that it can live out its entire life cycle in the water column. From larvae to adulthood it can be found floating here, and they spend the majority of their lives feeding on plankton. This ability is what makes them so special, because even though they will congregate in large numbers on the ocean floor, they will also do so in the water column. Sometimes off the west coast of the Gulf of California, you are able to find massive groups of these squat lobsters, and they seem to be completely suspended in the water. This can be a beautiful yet slightly threatening scene, as these squat lobsters will either flee or choose to pinch you. To see a large group such as this can be otherworldly, and they almost appear as birds in the sky. Although we can appreciate the beauty of this sight, I'm sure there's plenty of tuna that will enjoy it a lot more than we do. But for our next event we won't be heading to any specific location, nor will we be focusing on any specific creature, as I will be talking about ocean bioluminescence. Now bioluminescence isn't anything unique to the ocean, as there are plenty of land dwelling creatures with this ability. It's often seen in glowworms and fireflies, and bioluminescence is the production and emission of light by living organisms. It is a form of chemil luminescence, and being able to emit light comes with many benefits. Some creatures use it to communicate with each other, and others use it to fend off predators, and also attract prey. This is famously seen in deep sea species, and because light is so rare in the deep ocean, it's a very effective way of luring over prey animals. But the bioluminescence in the ocean isn't caused by one animal, but is in fact created by a whole host of animals. This light is often emitted by tiny creatures, such as plankton and also algae. It is most often seen when the water is agitated, and this is usually in the form of splashes, waves, and of course marine life. Dolphins who swim through water with bioluminescent algae can almost look like something out of your dreams. There isn't really a sight quite like it, and you'd be very lucky to witness this yourself. This bioluminescence isn't just restricted to the water though, because even when the waves wash up on the sand, when you start to dig through it it will still emit blue light. If you're anything like me and you want to see this event in your lifetime, luckily there are plenty of places where you can witness this bioluminescence, with some of the more popular areas being Jarvis Bay, Mosquito Bay, the Matsu Islands of Taiwan, and San Diego, California. And even though these sightings can be few and far between, I'm sure once you see them they are really worth the effort. But for our next event, strangely I won't be heading too far away from home, as we will be heading over to Cornwall, as we have the European Spider Crab. Now I'm guilty of saying the UK is one of the least wild places in the world, because this is quite a crowded group of countries, and outside our beautiful national parks, there is very little space for wildlife. But despite this, in the oceans it is a different story, because the UK is home to a vast array of marine life. It's home to the second largest fish in the world, and is also home to other large sharks such as blue sharks, thresher sharks, and poor beagles. As well as this, it is home to some endangered species, such as the increasingly rare angel sharks. Sometimes our shores are visited by very rare guests, these being orcas and walruses. But for the most part our coasts are very safe, and even though they're quite cold throughout most of the year, there have been no unprovoked shark attacks in Britain for 175 years. 
But sometimes along our coasts you will be able to find the European spider crab, and this is a relative of the much larger Japanese spider crab. Sometimes in shallow waters off the coast of Cornwall, you'll be able to find thousands of these crabs all congregated together, and this is solely for one purpose. As crabs grow, they need to molt, and this involves cracking open their exoskeletons to reveal a new outer shell. When they first do this, they are very soft and vulnerable, and this means that they are easy for predators to pick off. They congregate in such large groups because it is safe in numbers, and no matter how hard they try, predators aren't able to eat all of them. This of course is not unique to the coasts of the UK, as it does happen in many other areas, but it is all for the same reason. So although it's not unique to the UK, it is a very amazing sight nonetheless. But for our next species we can head to quite a few different areas, as we have the spinner sharks. Now this shark is in the vast family of sharks that also includes lemon sharks, the Galapagos shark, and blue sharks, but they most closely resemble the black tip shark, but are slightly larger, as they reach a maximum length of around 3 meters. In the wild they mostly feed on large bony fishes, and tend to target large schools of fish. Their hunting style is how they have got their name, as they will often swim upward through a ball of fish, spinning as they go. This is a very strange way to catch fish, but it does prove to be quite effective. Now there are a few other marine creatures that are known for spinning. One of these is the spinner dolphins, and these dolphins famously leave the water while spinning as fast as they can. This is really quite a sight to behold, and there's not a clear reason behind why they do this. Some believe it's a way to communicate, and it could also play a part in removing parasites, but other experts believe they do it just for fun. Even though spinner sharks aren't related to these spinner dolphins at all, they can be seen doing the same spinning displays. This really is a rare sight, and you'd be very lucky to witness it in the wild. Although they may not be as good as the dolphins, it is slightly more shocking to see sharks do this, because for most people they're seen as quite emotionless creatures, and it's nice to see them having a bit of fun. But strangely, although it may seem like fun at first, they do not spin for the same reasons as dolphins, but this is simply just their hunting technique. But even though these large fish don't do it for fun, it still is quite a shocking sight, and I'm sure you wouldn't want one of them to land on your boat. But for our next group of creatures, you can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as we have the rays. Now rays are famously close relatives of sharks, and they are some of the most elegant creatures in our oceans. Some of the largest are of course the manta rays, and one of the smallest rays in the world is the short-nosed electric ray. The many different species of ray that can be found in our oceans are all adapted to different lifestyles and different ecological niches. Some hug the ocean floor, whereas others prefer the open ocean. In this video I will be focusing on the latter, as they do create one of the most fascinating views in our oceans. Some of the rays that dwell in the water column often congregate to migrate. They'll migrate at different times of the year, and this usually depends on temperature and of course the changing of the seasons. Some of the species that are known to have large migrations are both the devil rays and the cow nose rays. When they do choose to migrate, they can be found in groups of hundreds of thousands, and this really is a sight to behold both in the water and above the water. When they congregate in these groups, they are known to jump out of the water, and this means that they don't just fly underwater, but fly above it too. When you look down at these creatures, it doesn't just look like the ocean is alive, but these rays almost appear as birds flying, and I'm sure this sight is something that you'd never forget. If you want to see this sight for yourself, you can visit the Sea of Cortez to see the mobula rays, or the cow nose ray migration can sometimes be seen off the coast of Florida. Of course there are companies that help you try and witness these sites, and I'm sure it's definitely something that should go on your bucket list. If you know of any other amazing ocean events then let me know down in the comments below, as I'll be more than happy to make a part 2. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you liked it please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.